from the Pixie Dust Studio in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome to the I See Hope Empowering Positive Change Podcast. I am Lori Lorenz, Human Energy Engineer, and your host for today's episode, An Infinite Love with Lisa Beck. Lisa Beck is an author, coach, personal trainer, and public speaker. She has a passion for learning and understanding how the body moves and how to help people feel better physically, mentally, and emotionally. When she's not working with health and wellness clients, Lisa delves into leadership coaching, helping to cultivate culture, communication, and leadership in men, women, and youth. And we're gonna be asking her about her best bud, Dax, during the episode. Lisa, it's so great to have you, welcome. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Lori. I'm so excited to be here and speak with you and your listeners today. Yay. And the book, oh, the book, An Infinite yes. Love. An Infinite Love, yes. Three years in the making. Ooh, but so worth it. I had the privilege of getting to read this book before it's even released. <laughs> so good. Uh, so, Lisa. I always ask, what is your superhero origin story? Where did all of this come from? Please fill yes. us in. Well, I grew up in northern Minnesota on the Iron Range. And from a young age, I knew that I wanted to explore, um, explore the world around me, get out of the small town. Um, the minute I turned 18, I was off like a rocket into college and couldn't wait to dive headfirst into that experience. And I went to the University of North Dakota, where I graduated with a bachelor's of science degree in athletic training. So working with sports teams and working with prevention, care, and rehabilitation of athletes and their injuries. From there, I went and moved to Massachusetts and obtained my master's degree in sports and event management. And then from there, I started working in the industry of sports and helping as an athletic trainer with um, some sports teams. And just throughout this entire process and throughout my entire life, just found myself kind of thinking, what's next? What's next? I always knew there was something more and something bigger for me to be doing and was never unhappy, but was never quite happy now looking back. And this got me into the realm of personal training. And I also did event management and I've done a hundred other little jobs and a lot of opportunities happened to fall into my lap. But again, this whole theme of like, what's more, what else is out there kept coming back to me. And um, one day I was just going for a walk. It was a warm summer day. And this idea about writing a book on self-love popped into my head. And I kind of thought, what the heck? Like, I'm not a writer. Why would I do this? But the more that I thought about it, the more excited I became and the more I could feel my energy growing. And so I sat down at a park bench and just kind of started to think about what this would be or entail. And at that moment, I had 20 chapter titles flooding into my mind and enough words to fill a page. And I became so excited and called to do this that I just sat down and started writing and journaling and researching like what does it mean to really love yourself and how do you heal some injuries that are emotional and what does that look like and I my and the book is my journey in exploring this whole realm of what does it mean to come back to yourself and rediscover your inner greatness we all may be happy in our life, but what does it mean to be extremely joyful and to spread that joy to others? And how do you form deep connections with the people around you? And what does that look like? And also, how do you set up healthy boundaries? And what does that look like? Because I found for myself, um, I am a people pleaser. So I would give and give and give and give. And so that can be great many of the times until it's not until all of a sudden you are feeling anxiety or resentment or discomfort because your boundaries are getting crossed over and over again, or you're just not getting in return what you are giving out. And so the old saying of put your oxygen mask on first before assisting others. And that's what this whole book is about 
as my journey on how I learned to do that, the lessons that I learned along the way. And then each chapter has what I call call to action. So ways you can go about creating more happiness, intimate connections, and more love and joy for yourself. Wow, that has a lot jam-packed into one book. Yes. Um, now, I know from a listener's point of view, the whole podcast is called I See Hope, mm -hmm. Empowering Positive Change. Sometimes when you're in that spot, probably like where you were starting from, it's like self-worth. I can't even spell that. What are yeah. you talking about? What is this infinite love stuff anyway? And do I even deserve it? Um, Absolutely. I would just say, guys, if it raises some sort of emotion in you, you've got to pick it up because it resonates. I know because, you know, you, you showed me this book and I went, hmm, what could this be about? It's a small book, but there's an infinity in it. Well, let's yeah. see how much she's jammed into this. And it was funny because I only could get through the third chapter before I couldn't see anymore because I had so <laughs> many tears coming out of my face and I'm not a weepy person. Yeah. This was just like opening up the log jams and the floodgates of things that I had just stuffed. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being kind and gentle because I could see that you were just giving us a little taste in each chapter to get us just a little deeper every time we want, because otherwise it is a roller coaster. Absolutely. And, and the whole purpose of the book is to challenge the readers into doing exactly what you did, Lori, and using the book as a tool and um, picking it up and setting it down and picking it up and setting it down and reflecting and reflecting and asking yourself some of the questions that I pose in there. Um, and I have a lot of personal stories in there that some people may relate to and some people may not, but it will bring up their own personal stories. And it's about the infinity sign is um, there for a reason because like infinity, um, love, self-love ebbs and flows. So it's, it's continual and some days are great and some days aren't so great. And so where you can find hope is in that maybe today is not great, but tomorrow is, or maybe this moment is not, maybe it's a moment to moment thing. This moment is not great, but I look forward to the next moment. And, um, when you say, um, empowering change it reminds me of one of the later chapters in the book about a lot of times we think our voice is small and that we can't make a change and that we um, don't impact people but I'm reminded of when I was traveling to Alberta Canada and exploring in the mountains with my family and we looked out and the forest was ravaged by a tiny little beetle uh, about the size of a pencil erase, eraser, and it had destroyed the entire Banff and Jasper National Forest. And we couldn't believe that this tiny, tiny little beetle could do have the power to do all that. But and it's like a silent, um, a silent um, factor. And we and I found it kind of funny because we were always searching for the grizzly bear which is loud and ferocious and intimidating. And so a lot of times people are scared of the giant, big ferociousness, but if you leave them alone, they don't bother you. Where it's a lot of times the silent ones that you need to be careful of because they make the greatest impact. Yes, and we're running into that now. Yes, absolutely. With the pandemic and yep. quarantines in, fact, in effect, we mm -hmm. have to essentially sit and reflect a lot more. Yes, and it's a time for us to slow down. Yes, and to wake up. Yes. And realize we don't have to suffer anymore. Absolutely. Right? Yep, we Absolutely. are not made to suffer. Nope. And we can ask for help. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And your book is one of those things where I finally felt the difference between the different kinds of tears and crying you could have. Mm -hmm. This is an awareness thing. There are tears of forgiveness. There are tears of, of course, sorrow. Yep. There are also tears of, why didn't I think of this sooner? And doggone it, I could have mm -hmm. fixed this back then, tears. <laughs> yep. And there's also tears of joy, right? Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. Those are the good ones. After you get Those done with good. it and go, oh, okay, I'm glad I got that out of my system. Yeah. Now yeah. We're, we're ready for the next, whatever she throws at me. Because it's just a feeling of a load off, a weight yeah. off of your chest. Yeah. And that's amazing that a book can do that. Well, I thank you for those words. And that's exactly the reason why I wrote this book book, and why I want to share my story and my words with, with others is to see that I, I'm a positive, confident, up, outgoing person, but everyone has their things, right? Everyone needs to learn to love themselves more and to give themselves more grace and to forgive them themselves and to forgive other people. And it doesn't mean that you um, don't forget the, the actions that someone took, but forgiving them and realizing hurt people hurt people and knowing when you're in that position yourself. And if you give yourself more love and show yourself more kindness, then you're able to have more compassion for others. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're um, essentially the head of a household and you've got a family, right? You love your family. You love However, them. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that can find that one nerve to jump on. <laughs> and it's like, ow. So I can see where having a practice of mm -hmm. some of the things you're talking about, that mindfulness, the self-love, self-care pieces to really help you you know, what the ups and downs Yep. really close relationships in this time. Absolutely. And, and it's important, especially now in this time when everyone is crammed together and parents are playing multiple roles that they never intended to play of teacher and trying to work, or maybe they're unemployed and still manage the household and everyone's together all the time and kids aren't able to play with their friends as much as they used to be, or you're not able to see your friends as much as you used to be. Now is the most important time. And you have to communicate this with your partner and say, Hey, I need 30 minutes to myself to take a bath or run to the grocery store, or um, maybe it's just folding laundry by yourself to give yourself that time, that breathing room. But again, it's important to communicate your needs to your partner so they can help you with that. Nice. And you know, there's always one person like in a family or extended family that figures it out first. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are kind of the leaders and they say, oh, I found a way to save 50% on groceries. That's awesome. Well, I found a way to cut down 50% on crazy making. Yep. Okay. Yep. I, I want that. 50% less crazy making. Yes. Can I have that, please? Yes. And I always like to think about in every relationship that you have, whether it's personal or professional friendship, you are responsible for 50% of that relationship, but you are responsible for 100% of the relationship with yourself. And how do you show up in that 100%? Are you showing up for yourself? Many times people will say, no, because I'm, again, giving my time, my energy, everything to everyone else and not showing up for myself. But when you take the time to quote unquote, fill your own bucket, then that bucket is able to overfill to, to others. And if you are filling your life with love and joy and happiness, then that is going to overflow love, joy, happiness is going to overflow to the people around you. Yes. Yes. And I've heard the phrase, when mom's not happy, nobody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Well, guess what? Let's kind of hit that joy frequency and start the day in joy. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like loads the day in your favor. Yep. As I can tell. And even if it's quiet joy, it doesn't have to be hyperactive joy. You know? Absolutely. Well, yes. joy happens in the present moment. Yes. And that is the lesson that I experienced today. And I just wrote a blog piece about it, but I was out for a walk with my dog Dax and across the street I saw this golden retriever that was carrying half a tree in its mouth and just walking down the street with its owner happy as can be and 
it brought my heart so much warmth and joy to see that dog. And I, I realized I saw him because I was not thinking about what all I had to accomplish today, or I wasn't worried about what I did or didn't do yesterday. I was fully in the moment and in the joy of my walk outside with my dog. Yes. And that dog was in the moment of joy with his yes. monster stick going yes. the yes. king of the monster stick. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. I had a, a Maltese, which is, you know, hors d'oeuvre size, you know, yeah. for, for most dogs, but uh, those little dogs will pick up a twig and feel joy. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Like, look what I did, Mom. And, you know, our, our value, our self-worth and our self-value, we look at somebody else having a giant stick and going, well, why don't I have a giant stick? Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily comparing yourself to others, but really valuing what you do have. Absolutely. And that's one of the goals that I hope this book and infinite love teaches people is that why are you putting these expectations on yourself or comparing yourself to other people? That's not your journey. Your journey is unique and your journey is its own because we were, we are all uniquely awesome, amazing individual people. And you're not supposed to accomplish or do what other people are doing. You're only supposed to do what you were created to do. Awesome. Well, you know, I think one of the things I wanted to touch on is maybe a little something that you could share with everybody. Yes. One, get the book. It's out <laughs> yes, May 19th, yes. right? Yes. Um, yes. That is huge, but a little sneak peek of what they could get. I think you have a freebie you could offer, right? Yes, yes. If you go on to my website and infinitelove.com um, and join my wait list, we have the um, introduction to the book available right now, but we'll also be having the first chapter. And the first chapter is called um, Time to Love Yourself More. And so it's all about coming back to yourself and learning how to love yourself over again and learning how to recognize if you aren't in love your, with yourself, what does that look like? And then again, with each chapter, there's specific lessons to reflect upon and then action items you can take to help further the point of the lessons. Nice. Yeah. Now, I, I hear a rumor that pre-sales opens up very soon. Very soon, yes. Absolutely. And the book will be available very shortly within the next few weeks. And so if you join my um, wait list, you'll be notified of when pre-sales start and when the book is available and then any other fun content that I will be doing as well. Right. Speaking of fun, I also heard that you are going to have a book signing party as a virtual party. Yes, we are not letting this coronavirus stop us from celebrating ourselves. So we're going to have a live virtual book signing. And it's just going to be a fun way to connect with readers and to get a personalized autograph message to the book. And then we'll ship the book off to you and you can start your own self-love journey. Yay. Yeah. And I think you said something about a Facebook group. Yes, yep, yep. We're creating a Facebook group for all of our readers, and it's going to be an, an infinite love fan group. And um, again, this will be available on my website as well. And it's for anyone who's reading the book. And if they want to have any inspirational comments or questions or just interact amongst fans, um, other readers, because the only way you learn and grow is with others through the connection of others. And it makes it more fun. And the journey is a little bit easier when you know you're going through it with someone else. And so we request only positive speak and no negativity on the Facebook page. Um, we want to learn and grow together. That sounds really good. And you know, everyone's journey is so unique. Mm -hmm. And for me, as I'm reading this book, I think back on my journey and I, I pick out parts of it and I kind of like heal it in reverse. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Reverse and engineer it. Reverse engineer it. So the book mm -hmm. is now, but a lot of the growing up with kids was earlier. Yep. But if I can see it a new light and pick up the lesson and say, oh, I got it. Then hopefully that lesson won't dog my heels. <laughs> 
<laughs> Absolutely. It's never too late to work on yourself. There's never a bad time, but it is a choice and you do have to make the time to do it. Well, you know what? We have all the time in the world. <laughs> we have all the time in the world right now. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And we're in it together. We're all in, in it together. together. And if everybody reads the book and then brings, you know, their ahas and their joy moments to the Facebook page, then that just kind of doubles, triples, exponentially expands all the joy you can get out of the book. Absolutely. And I don't think people understand how much they can help others by just sharing their aha moments or their stories or the lessons they learned because it affects everyone. The lack of um, self-worth affects everyone. And even, even me who has written the book and read the book probably a hundred times, I still find I'm learning the lessons and need to, to refresh myself throughout each chapter. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing that. And I wrote about it. You're like, oh, I fell off that train. Got to get back on. So I hope my hope is to have this book be a living, breathing tool that you can constantly come back to and learn and grow in all you do. And just to help yourself be a better person because then you are more capable of loving and serving others. Right. Now we've kind of mentioned families a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, who are the, the readers that you kind of wrote this for? Do you yeah, absolutely particular groups or? Yeah, yeah. Well, as I'm in my late 30s, I guess the book is kind of geared towards um, young families. So any specifically because I'm female, I write a lot from the female perspective. And a lot of my I don't have any children, but a lot of my friends have young children. My sister, I have a sister. She has two young kids. And so a lot of the book is written with the reader in mind of being a female, um, I would say mid twenties to um, early fifties, but a lot, a lot of the lessons are gender neutral and can work for anyone. But a lot of the stories in there are based towards that um, young mom, the young mom who I also find maybe has lost herself in the care of her kids and her family because we love our children so much and we're trying to do and be everything for them and help them grow. And no, everyone wants their kid to be smart and successful and confident and so we throw all we have into raising our family, which is amazing and needed. And then we lose ourselves a little bit on the way. And you're so busy running your children here to there in this activity and packing lunches and making sure all their life is taken care of. You're forgetting, a lot of times we forget about our own lives. What are our own passions? What are our own hobbies? What was our life like before kids? Because sometimes or eventually they're going to leave. And then you don't want to be left back of like, who am I? What, what happened to me along this journey? So the more you take care of yourself as a mom and the more your kids see you happy and joyful and expressing your emotions and dealing with lessons and um, old trauma, the better they will be as, as, as they get into their adulthood. Yes. Amen to that one. Amen to that. Yes. And, you know, being the eccentric aunt, you know, <laughs> after my kids were, you know, I'm an empty nester, so I get to be the yep. eccentric aunt now. <laughs> so much more fun. And uh, same thing with being a grandparent. This yep. could work too. Uh, Absolutely. Nice thing. You know, you spoil the kids and give them back. But sometimes, you know, these days extended families are coming back. Yep. Um, yep. I would also encourage our listeners to think about this book for a book club. Absolutely. It's a great book for a book club because there are so many discussion points and reflection points. And to work on this as a group is amazing. And as we spoke, for, spoke to before, you learn and grow through other people's stories. Yes. And so many good stories. I really appreciate that. And um, if people want to get involved, connect with you. Yes. Your email is lisa at aninfinitelove.com. Correct. Website, aninfinitelove.com. Correct. Facebook group, an infinite love fan. Yep, correct. 
And we'll have all that in the blog article. And uh, the freebie is that chapter that they can find on your website. Correct. Excellent. Yes. And I love your logo. It's an uh, infinity sign with the word love in it. So yes. look for that, everybody. Yes, look for that logo. And the picture of the book will be on the blog article too, and that's at ichope.world. So you'll know what the book looks like even before the book is available. So perfect. Yay. Well, I really appreciate your time and going over all the, the wonderful insight that we're going to be able to experience with your book. I can't wait. I want to be at the book signing party. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lori, for having me on your wonderful podcast. It was my pleasure to speak about my journey a little bit, and hopefully that I have an impact and can help others on theirs. Yes. Oh, can I put a picture of Dax on the uh, the blog post? <laughs> Most definitely. You can put a picture of Dax. Oh, you know, dog mom, right? <laughs> dog mom. That's my role, dog mom. Mm. That's right. Our, our four-legged uh, family members and furry family members do, you know, contribute to... Absolutely. He has taught me... He has taught me so much, so, so much about loving someone unconditionally and the flow of energy between masculine and feminine. And actually, I'm surprised he hasn't barked during, <laughs> during this recording. <laughs> well, he gets it. He's a yeah. very smart dog. He, well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, heart smart. How about yes. that? Heart yes, smart. very nurturing. Yes. Well, thank you. I think that book will bring a lot of hope to people and empower a lot of those fun little positive change ripples that are going to yes. go through people's lives. I know it has for me, so hopefully it does for others as well. Very good. Thank you, Lisa. We'll talk later. Thank you, Lori. You have been listening to the I See Hope podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. Visit us online at ichope.world, where you can subscribe to our podcast, our newsletter, read blog articles, and so much more.